Hey, it's John Nolan here. Listen, with everything that's going on in the world today, it's the perfect time to become self-sufficient, grow your own food if you can, and prepare with emergency food. You won't regret having this when you need it. And right now you can save $250 in a three month food kit from My Patriot Supply. It's their lowest price in three years. Go to preparewithinspired.com and get your $250 saving on this three month emergency food kit. That's preparewithinspired.com. Hey, hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for liking, thank you for sharing, thank you for commenting, thank you for subscribing, and thank you for hitting the notifications button so you'll get notified about new videos. Today, we're talking about a very important subject, something that's been on my mind for a very long time. Listen, everything today is kind of happening on the internet. All debates, research, news, entertainment, everything is happening on the internet. And while people are talking about algorithms and bots and AI and all that, I think very few people actually understand what that means. But looking at all the engagement online, looking at how many new posts, new likes, new tweets, new videos, new everything comes out each day, I've been asking myself the question, how populated is the internet really? How many real people are actually on the internet? Well, there are a few interesting stats here. As of 2022, there are 4.9 billion active internet users worldwide. That's 62% of the world's total population. So more than half of the people are on the internet today. A whooping 93% of Americans currently use the internet. And that is compared to 361 million total in the whole world in the year 2000. So in the past 22 years, some 4.6 billion internet users have been added. But here's the interesting thing. How many of these internet users on the internet are actually real? And I wanna lead with a very, very shocking, shocking number. According to Barracuda Networks, Bots accounted for 64% of the internet traffic in 2021. 64% of the internet traffic. That's absolutely crazy. That means that way more than half of the accounts, the comments, and everything that's happening on the internet is not driven by real people. What does that mean? Well, first, let's look at what a bot is. I think people have a semi-understanding of what a bot is, but let's look at some of the definitions. A software program that imitates the behavior of a human as in participating in chat room or IRC discussions. Now that's troubling for me to say that a bot is something that imitates human behavior, right? Wouldn't I rather know that I'm communicating with a machine or with a software program and be clear on that, rather than it imitating human behavior and probably or maybe even disguising itself as a human, that's kind of troubling to me. The second definition is a software program such as a spider that performs automated tasks on the internet. Okay, I can see that for certain reasons. And the third definition is the parasitic larva of a bot fly. So all in all, not very positive, but what are bots being used for today? And why is this so important for you to know? Because there's really good news in all of this, so stick around, listen. Bots can be political bots. So these bots are used mostly on Twitter to spread in misinformation. I would say not mostly on Twitter. We notice them on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, all the other platforms. So they're used to spread misinformation. That's a big term, but yes, in many ways, this is true. The most commonly talked about ones in the media have been Russian bots. Of course, this is just the media, which only 11% of the people listen to and trust in anyway. So that doesn't mean a lot. The truth is, the bots are being used in a political spectrum by all parties and they're being used for specific reasons and they're driving discussions. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. Then there are vanity bots. It sounds kind of innocent, but it isn't. These bots were created to add numbers and fake engagement to social media followings to give the appearance that an influencer has a bigger and potentially more engaged following than they actually do. So today, rather than buying likes and buying followers for your Instagram profile or whatever, you don't need to do that. You can actually create a company that creates bots for you. 
they will imitate human behavior and make it real and make it so that nobody else can figure out if these are real human beings or not. Wow, what a level of deception. I would call this fraud, wouldn't we? I mean, that's really what it is. And then they're kind of in cahoots with the vanity bots are the conversion or traffic bots. And these bots are created with the intention of driving traffic to websites where purchases can be made. These can be spammy but effective. They target consumers who are interested in certain topic and then entice them with an outbound click. Now, we, you might have heard of click farms or bot farms. And these are actually oftentimes big rooms with thousands of phones and thousands of computers. It's getting less and less hardware intense and more and more software intense. But the idea is the same, to produce artificial traffic on the internet, to make things appear bigger than they are. Now this, according to a study, it's estimated that on the economic side, by the end of 2020, click fraud by bots will account for $44 billion in fraud. More than $44 billion in fraud this year by click bots. So that means they're either clicking on links where the advertisers pay per click or they're driving traffic to through advertisements and other paid services and create artificial numbers that are not real. This is actually absolutely horrific. But what these bots really do in conjunctions with the algorithms and um, the artificial intelligence driving it all is manipulating real people that are on the internet and hugely every day and doing it without anybody knowing it. The problem is here that algorithms. That's the thing that determines when you are on any social media site like Twitter or Facebook or Instagram or all the others. If you're on there, the algorithm determines what you are seeing while you're scrolling. In the very beginning, it appeared to be that way that when you were on Facebook, you would see the posts by your friends in chronological order, which meant that if somebody posted something three days ago and you just logged on to Facebook, you would see that first and then everything that came after that in the correct order. This kind of makes sense, right? It was very intuitive for us. Now the algorithm, which was at some point programmed by human beings, now algorithms are being programmed by AI so much that there is very little interference, but of course human beings set the parameters. So the algorithm will be automatically influenced by whoever and whatever program was creating it. And so what I'm getting at here is, and this is really important, so many people today are frustrated, sad, depressed, because they think that this neo-fascist liberal world order, this new world order, this cabal world order, this great reset crowd, world economic forum crowd, that these people have a lot of support because they see huge numbers online. What I'm suggesting to you, the good news here is, that their bots, their AI, their computers, their fake profiles, their fake Facebook accounts, fake Twitter accounts, more than 50 million fake Twitter accounts confirmed, right? We've learned that through the Elon Musk attempt at purchasing Twitter. We've learned that more than 15% of their accounts are actually fake. They agree with that. Real people very, very seldomly agree. But of course, if you add the media that is 99% influenced by this neo-fascist new liberal world order, well, if you take that all together and add it up, it would appear as if they had the majority of people on their side. I'm gonna go out on a limb here. I'm gonna say they don't even have a significant minority of people behind them. They just make it look like it, right? So when you scroll through comments on posts, when you look at the engagement, the likes, the views and everything, you have to assume that a lot of it is fake. A lot of the provocative comments, a lot of those people who steer the conversation in different directions, it's literally fake. These are bots and you can see that they can create world events. If you have a click farm, if you have a bot farm, it's where either people sit on phones, which is old school, where you control it with AI. You can create so much traffic around a certain topic that otherwise no one would be interested in. You can create whole movements. I mean, we see this today in the 
gender crazy movement has nothing to do anymore with acceptance, has nothing to do anymore with what this movement originally was and had legitimacy in it. Now this is a brainwashing mind control movement and it's being driven by artificial intelligence. There aren't enough people who are legitimately interested in and extremely supportive of the AI of the artificial intelligence transhumanist agenda. They simply aren't. And it is so important that we realize that just because we see numbers on a screen just because we see it on the internet doesn't mean it is actually real. Actually more than 64% of the traffic on the internet is not real. It's created by freaking bots. So that is actually good news. It also leads us to what we've been talking about so often we need to get together in person again so we can realize again like we used to sit together around a table, chat, talk, exchange views and, and just be together so we can realize how many people are actually still using common sense or still sane, have their hearts in the right place and want to move in a good organic natural direction for mankind. This is so important to understand that the internet can be such a toxic place, but it is also important to understand that a lot of this toxicity is not really driven by real people. A lot of people have asked us about our channel. They said some of the numbers we see on your channel don't add up. Well, I'll tell you what, they don't add up. We've been noticing this and observing this. Uh, for example, our views to like ratio is extremely high. This is very positive, right? What that means is that if we have, I don't know, let's say we have 100,000 views in a video, we'll often see 20 to 30,000 likes. That is 20 to 30%. That's very, very high, very unusual. Most channels are somewhere between four on a low end or three on a low end that are good channels and then 10 on the high end. What that tells me is we either have a very extraordinary audience, which I know we do, but what it tells me more is that likely the views that show up on our videos aren't correct, but probably, I don't know, two thirds lower. So what that means is when you see 30,000 views in one of our videos, it's more likely that it actually has 50, 60 or 70,000 views, but YouTube isn't showing that. They're literally like turning back the odometer on the car. They're turning back the view meter on our videos, but the likes still reflect that we have more views, right? So that's happening. Also, although we have a 20 to 30% ratio of likes for views, so 20 to 30% of the people who watch a video like it, our subscribers are going negative. They're going backwards a lot of days, which doesn't make sense because if so many people love a video, we would have to gain more subscribers. Now we're not complaining. We understand how the game is being played. That's why we have also decided to focus more on platforms like Locals and Rumble, where actual real people are getting together. As far as we can tell, Locals is so far our favorite because we can see real community there. I wanted to bring this to you in terms of good news. You could say this is horrible. It's all artificial, yes, but the internet is artificial. But the good news here is, that there's way fewer people who are interested in all the crap that is distracting mankind from being what we can really be. It's really bought and AI driven, so I encourage you, get together with your people. Get together with real people, create groups and communities. It's the most important thing. And last but not least, on this note, I'd like to invite you, we would like to invite you, Christine and I have decided to expand the local groups, groups here that we're already a part of. So we want to invite you to a meetup in the group here in the greater Nashville area on Friday, September 9th. If you are interested in coming, it's going to be a free event. It's about people getting together and starting new groups and communicating, you know, chatting, getting to know each other. If you're interested in that, please send us an email to info at inspiredchannel.net and put Nashville in the subject line. If you're in this area in Nashville, Tennessee or close by, we'll send you all the information. You're invited, bring a chair, bring a, a bottle of water or something to eat a snack, bring your family and let's have a wonderful time together. That's Friday, September 9th. Again, just send us an email to info at inspiredchannel.net, put Nashville in the subject line We'll send you all the information. All right, Inspired Tribe, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for being with us. We love you. We appreciate you. And we'll be back with you again very, very soon.